Education Assistant at the First Unitarian Church of Salt Lake City, and this is the UU of the Week. Last week, America marked the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment being ratified. After decades of fighting, the 19th Amendment finally gave women the right to vote in America in the year 1920. There are a multitude of Unitarian women who were also suffragists, so it's incredibly hard to pick just one. I tried. <laughs> to clarify, the women who fought for suffrage or the right to vote called themselves suffragists. The familiar term suffragette was actually used by their critics to minimize or make fun of their efforts. These are women who collectively organized and protested for 72 years, beginning with the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848. They were publicly shamed and sometimes physically attacked. They were sent to jail for protesting or for trying to vote. These women deserve the utmost respect, and I think the best way to show it is to vote. Never miss an opportunity once it's your turn. But back to our story. Famous UU women like Susan B. Anthony, Lucy Stone, Harriet Stanton Blatch all did their part to win the right to vote for women. But today I'm going to talk about Carrie Chapman Catt. She became involved in the second wave of the suffrage movement starting in about 1880 and was instrumental in helping the constitutional amendment pass and later get ratified or approved by the states in 1920. She was born Carrie Clinton Lane in Iowa in 1859. And you guys, we have a new winner for the UU of the week with the most names with Carrie Clinton Lane Chapman Cat coming in at five names. <laughs> Her first husband, Leo Chapman, had traveled to California to find a place for them both to live, but he died of typhoid before she could join him. She did live in California for a short time after that and put her hard-won college degree to work by becoming San Francisco's first female newspaper reporter. Kat's father did not think she needed to go to college. Boo! So she washed dishes and was a school teacher over the summer to pay her own tuition. She was the only woman in her graduating class and went on to become the superintendent of schools in Iowa. She was very successful. <laughs> Carrie later married a wealthy engineer named George Catt, who encouraged her to get involved in the suffrage movement. Her privilege allowed her to work tirelessly. She was Susan B. Anthony's hand-picked predecessor as president of the National American Women's Suffrage Association. Catt traveled the country and the world speaking and raising support for suffrage. Carrie Cat even spoke in Utah. Women in most of the Western states already had the right to vote. And in fact, women's suffrage was written into Utah's state constitution from the very beginning. Cat tried to rally women in the free states, as they were called, to extend the right to vote to all women, including African-American women. Cat was criticized for allowing black membership in the National American Women's Suffrage Association, but she said that we were all in this together. Another leader in the movement was Alice Paul. She was fiery, staging pickets and parades and hunger strikes from prison. Alice Paul attacked then President Woodrow Wilson while Carrie Cat tried to win Wilson's favor. Cat argued that women were patriots, especially once America entered World War I. She said that women were keeping the country running while the men were away at war, and for that, they deserved to be given the vote. Early suffragists had made this argument before, though, during the Civil War. They were promised the vote if they turned their efforts from suffrage to abolition, and they did so. But then when black men were given the right to vote after the Civil War, women were told that the country could only handle so much change at once. And this caused anger and unfortunate, unfortunately racism, which plagued the suffrage movement up until its end. 
So Alice Paul did not trust the system that had betrayed women time and time again with one failed referendum in the States after another, while Carrie Catt worked within the political system. She devised what she called the winning plan. Carrie Catt believed that a federal amendment was the best chance women had. After years of effort, Catt finally won the support of President Woodrow Wilson, squeezing out approval of the amendment in the Senate and the House by only a few votes. Then the amendment needed to be approved or ratified by a majority of 36 states, and Carrie Catt's years of forming agreements with the states finally paid off. The 19th Amendment was approved on August 26th, 1920. Just six months before that happened, Carrie Catt founded the League of Women Voters, which to this day still works to expand voting rights and fights voter suppression. Now, Carrie Catt's political achievements were so many and varied that it was hard to find much information about her faith, but she was a Unitarian. Her friends and mentors were Unitarians. Women in History Ohio noted that fellow Unitarian Charles Darwin's origin of the species was very influential to her. They said she was, quote, already skeptical of traditional religion, yet retaining faith in human potential Carrie embraced this philosophy, seeing evolutionary science as offering the idea of a constantly evolving and improving world, moving toward a free and peaceful society. With her life being focused on equality and justice from suffrage to her campaigning for providing aid to Jewish people in Germany during, during World War II, it is easy to see the influence of Unitarian ideals in her work. She even did the work of dismantling racism in herself, publicly stating that her ideas about race from her youth were wrong. Carrie Chapman Catt died in 1947 and was buried alongside her companion of 20 years, Mary Garrett Hay. Her friend, an African-American suffragist, Mary Church Terrell, wrote that the world has lost a great, good and gifted woman who for many years pleaded with it to deal justly with all human beings without regard to sex, race, or religion. Thank you for learning about our UU of the Week, Carrie Chapman Catt.